Hi guys, welcome back to another video and I'm once again being spoiled today uh, by Eastman Guitars with this. This belongs to my friend and it is the T59V. Uh, he actually picked this up after some of my older Eastman videos and uh, figured this was the one for him. And if you follow the channel uh, regularly, you'll know that I recently got a T59V. So later in the video, we will sort of compare the two of them because um, they're, they're, they're way different than they are similar, obviously, being uh, this is fully hollow versus semi-hollow uh, and many other things. But let's get on to the spec of this guitar first. And I will pause slightly because I'm just taken back by how gorgeous this thing looks. I promise in the flesh it's even better. But it is a laminated maple top, back and sides. Uh, still your normal 16 inch diameter, so the same width as a 335 or my T59. Uh, it is a tiny bit thinner this way, but only very, very slightly. And you'll notice no flame top. It is just a plain maple top and back. And the finish is that sort of hand applied varnish. And I have to say it feels even thinner uh, on this guitar than it does on the, the 59, but we'll come back to that later on when we look at them directly. Um, but you have a Goto trapeze and bridge just there. Um, these are Lola Dog Ear P90s. Some of these are listed uh, with Seth Lovers, particularly the Sunburst ones. Um, but either way, once again, fantastic choice of pickups for these guitars. But these ones you're hearing today are the Lollas. Going on to the fingerboard, usual sort of ebony 12 inch radius with the uh, medium jumbo Jeskar frets, which are just perfect. The inlays are a bit different. You've got these sort of block trapeze pearl inlays uh, as opposed to the split ones that are on mine. Neck profile is very similar. It's that slightly bigger C, but still sort of, you know, if you can see my thumb over the top there, just really, just perfect basically, you know, <laughs> amazing neck. Uh, bone nut, and hopefully I can get the camera to focus instead of on my face. It's always the job. There we go, uh, SD90 aged tuners there as well. Uh, just to show you the binding sort of thing. All the way around, really, really, really nicely done. And then you've got Switchcraft, you know, usual sort of good quality stuff for the electronics, Switchcraft, Jack, Switch, uh, 250K pots on this one, which are the audio linear ones. Um, but, you know, in terms of your hardware, it's just absolute top-notch stuff like we used to see them by now. And you do get this really nice case of it as well. So what we'll do now, we'll get onto some sounds uh, because, as you can see, it's daytime for a change. Uh, first of all, I'm going to plug this into my Marshall Jubilee Loud, and I'm just going to I'm just going to enjoy that for a minute. And then for the rest, we'll go back to the Katana and my pedal board, and you'll hear the rest of the sounds uh, that way. And then we will get on to comparing this with my T59 as well, just in case, you know, you're kind of stuck in between the two. So let's get on to that and I'll see you in a minute. <laughs>
So there you go, you heard just a very small, you know, slice of the sounds this thing can do. Um, and once again, same as I said about this one, it's just, it's such a musical sounding, harmonically rich guitar and the dynamics in it, once again, are just incredible. But let's say you're someone who's stuck between the 59, the 335, or the 64, the 330, because in terms of appeal, you can see in this shot, you know, they're both visually very similar, both got the same kind of vibe about them, but they could not be more different. Uh, and one of the things you might not know about the differences, which I didn't, by the way, is where the neck join is. So on the 59, it actually joins at the 18th fret, 17th, 18th fret. And on the 64, it joins at the 16th fret, which means, if I can just put that down, when you're sat playing the 64, everything's just a little bit more comfortable. You've got the neck that's a little bit more in, and it is easier to play than the 59. It just, when I went back to the 59, uh, in the sound examples coming up next, there was, you know, a period of adjustment sort of thing, because I was like, oh yeah, this thing's actually like not as easy to play. Uh, in terms of weight, obviously this being fully hollow, this is just under seven pounds. And this 335, 59, is just over eight pounds, which is still a good weight for one of these. But, you know, obviously you're gonna feel uh, that difference. Now, this is gonna be obvious, but I wanna show you anyway. Before we get onto the sort of electric sound differences between the two, listen to how different they are acoustically. And I'm just gonna use the camera mic here which ain't a great mic, but just listen to how different they sound. So there you go, hopefully that came across um, in those sort of brief examples. Comparing these two guitars is like comparing apples and oranges really, they're two completely different guitars, but I can definitely see that you might be torn as to which one to get because, you know, these aren't super affordable and you might only be able to get one. So if, if that's you, hopefully that, uh, that helped. Now, when talking about these type of guitars, it's hard not to bring up Gibson because although Eastman do their own thing as well, you know, these are very much so uh, those type of guitars. And I've spoken about that at length uh, on my other Eastman videos, so I won't go on about it too much here. All I will say is that comparing these type of guitars to standard Gibsons, uh, you can just forget about it. That They're in a totally, totally different league. And, you know, these are much more on the par with the, the nice high-end uh, custom shop Gibsons, but for three to five times less. And being around these Eastman guitars, whether it's one I own, one I'm borrowing, it's they they fill you with every bit of enjoyment. You know, the whole experience is just the same as that of a top top end Gibson. So you know, and like I said, I've gone into this at length for my other Eastman videos, so you can uh, go and check those out. But Hopefully you enjoyed this little look at uh, the T64. There is one last elephant in the room that my uh, regular viewers might be wondering. Well, does he prefer the T64 over the, uh, the, the wonderful gift of my, uh, my better half? And it, I'll leave that to you to decide. What do you reckon I prefer? To me, they're both stunning. They're, they're two different guitars. And um, if I could keep this one, 
I would, <laughs> for sure. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again on another video.